All right, Go Produce, here we are for another one of our episodes of the Reflection Series. My name is Big Lou. This is Go Produce. This is the podcast where we explore how music industry professionals turn their passions into profit. Thank you for joining us today. Make sure to join us every single Wednesday as we release new episodes right here so that you can figure out how to turn your passions into profit. Also, I want to make sure that you stay until the end because I've got three big tips that you don't want to miss out. So make sure you stay. Hit them with the intro. This is Go Produce turning that passion to profit. This is for those of you who think you got it and want it. Music industry professionals, I'm talking to you. This is the Go Produce podcast and my name is Big Lou. I need to take it all the way back to the basics. And I figured why not ask Mike Denny with all of his experience to break it down as simply as he could for me. What is the difference between agents, managers, and labels? Let's hear from him. In simplest form, uh, the agent is responsible for securing live performance opportunities. The Coles Notes for a Record label is to exploit the master of the recording artist as much as it possibly can. And the artist manager is to direct, guide, lead, and bring forth as many opportunities as they can. After hearing what he has to say, it makes me realize that being green within the industry isn't necessarily a bad thing. It does, however, mean that you've got so much to learn and the best time to do so is now. Also to reiterate what Mike was saying about agents and managers and as to when you may need them on your team, simply put, an agent will approach you when you are ready. Don't don't spend your time and energy looking for agents because that's not going to take you to the next level. When you're at the next level, the agents will find you. When you're ready for a manager is when you are already making money and then you can use this money to then pay the manager to help you manage how you make your money. That's when you're ready, not at the beginning before you're making any money. I also want to get a little bit further into labels. I figured labels are kind of a relatively loose term nowadays, especially nowadays. So why not dive a little bit more into what that is, what they are. Dan Hand will share with us what the role of an A&R is at a record label. So an A&R representative, their job is um, artists and repertoire. So you're hired by your label um, to basically go out and find the artists and help them build the repertoire. Um, so, you know, you find, you find an artist that you love and then the idea is about building all of the art around them. So you find the right producer for that artist. You know, if the artist doesn't have quite the right songs, maybe you set up different songwriting sessions and get them co-writing with different writers. Uh, and then it goes down the line. You know, you help them find the right photographer to take the right press photo that's going to help the artists tell their story. You're going to find the right director for the music videos. And basically you're there from the beginning of signing the artist to that label to the moment that the product is now a product and ready to be marketed. As Dan says, you've got to find the artist and build their repertoire, which is essentially the whole body of work that the artist is putting out. That's what the role of the A&R does. Find the artist, build their A&R. Wow. Find the artist, build their repertoire. A-R. This in itself is a big monumental step that an artist can take to accelerate their career. However, at the beginning stages of your career, it is far from necessary. It's not something that you need. At the beginning of your career, you're gonna wanna do a lot of networking. And this in itself is how you will build those strategic collaborations where you will eventually get to the level where an a &R or an agent or a manager will be finding you and then helping you get to the next level from there. But we're talking about record labels and a &Rs, but what if you don't even wanna get signed? What if you don't think labels are for you? Or maybe you do wanna get signed but you don't know where you want to get signed to. You've got to ask these questions that Jay Hodgson is presenting. Yeah, and then what do you mean by label? Uh, I, I think the term is just is just meaningless now at this point. You know, you go to Distro Kid or CD Baby, upload a track, and hey, I'm running a label. <laughs> you know, uh, yeah, having having people doing marketing and promotions for you is fantastic if they if they have scale, if they can scale your project, and they have reach to scale your project. But if they don't, then um, you're really just, you know, looking to, again, it's like emotionally reassuring. I'm on a label. I, yeah. I'm actually a musician, you know, that sort of, that sort of thing, as opposed to, as opposed to saying like, uh, you know, here's a, a track, here's a, a bit of music, and I've made some money off it, which is really what it boils down to. Yeah. Does representation only matter if they have reached then? 
I mean, representation, they're taking some of your value uh, just as long as they're offering you value, but you have to be clear on what the value is. I have students come to me all the time in their fourth year and, and I, you know, we have these conversations and I'll say, what do you want to do? And some of them will say, well, get signed by a label. And the very first question I always ask is, what label? <laughs> Who are you interested in? Yeah. And they don't know. At this point in time, I have no interest in being signed by a label. Maybe down the road, it's something to consider, but we'll see then. But if you are interested in being signed by a label, can you answer me this? Can you tell me which label specifically you want to be signed to and why that label? If you're able to answer those questions, fantastic. Pat on the back for you. However, whether you want to get signed or not, you're going to have to be able to develop a buzz on your own. You need to develop this buzz in order to build leverage. You want leverage as an independent artist and you want leverage as an artist that's pursuing a record label deal. The more leverage you have, the more that you can get out of this deal, the less they are abusing you. I also thought it was quite interesting having a conversation with Dalton Higgins about what record labels do and how they promote the music that they promote. Let's go ahead and peel back the layers of the proverbial onion on record labels with Dalton. If we peel back the layers of the proverbial onion a bit and if we look at the record companies, like, so, you know, because the, the blame is not always, you know, certainly always placed on the earth, but the record companies that are signing this. So, you, so you're going to tell me now, um, how do we, as far as accountability, like, if, if an artist comes to you and is, and is a sexist, misogynist, um, and it's just a junk, like, the, you know, but you're signing it to multi-million dollar record deals. I mean, clearly there are a bunch of other, uh, you know, players involved that are, that are uh, you know, participating in this culture that are co-signing this that are funding it they're funding the misogyny they're funding yeah. the sexism you know so and then also too from a media standpoint me being a you know sort of semi-retired journalist but uh you know working in pr the last 10 years my own company it's just like i also too um am uh, i get it's a bit outraged you know like how the stuff that gets picked up is sometimes oftentimes the most inflammatory material so so for so example if i service an artist that is doing you know, is very much into class consciousness as an activist, is talking about environmental issues. Many media outlets don't give a crap. They couldn't care less. But if I submit the next day an artist that is just a degrading women and uh, super into, you know, like mass, uh, you know, like capitalism and uh, just materialism, materialist and just a cliche, a caricature, um, it's going to get picked up immediately and shared widely online, right? So I find, so there's just a lot of hypocrisy as far as the record companies, uh, mainstream media, the types of things they choose to air and sign and co-sign and fund and support. It's backwards. Super backwards. I've got to say he's made some very compelling arguments. They're funding the misogyny. What do you think about this? Go ahead. Let me know in the comments. What do you think labels have in terms of influence over the kinds of music that is put out? Do you agree with the kinds of music that they put out? Let's uh, let's see what you think. I do really wonder though, why is it the items and topics that get picked by blogs and vlogs are typically inflammatory? I also really wonder if it's just a greater representation of our modern society. Anyway, regardless of wanting to be signed or not, you're gonna wanna know when you can start upping your rate so that you can start charging more. Yes? Jordan Pauly shares with us, when do artists become worth more? You can kind of just feel it and you can kind of, you can see it in the like, when you're discussing with a buyer as to where to set like a ticket price, if you're looking at like, there's two different ways to look at the value of an artist when you're going into the live touring. There's soft tickets and hard tickets. Soft tickets are like your festivals, your corporates, your branded events where you can go in and you don't have to worry about ticket sales and it's typically a flat rate. When you're looking at hard tickets, it's something that works into like a back end deal structure and it's like you set the value of the tickets and this typically works with club touring, which is somewhere that I'm more familiar with in terms of our company and our roster. Um, and okay. when you're talking with the buyers, you can like discuss where you feel good about the ticket price based on history, based on the following in the market. And you try to set that to a point that you can actually sell enough tickets to get people in the door for this while still turning a profit. Typically, your first couple of plays in any market, whether it's New York, Toronto, LA, like Wisconsin, whatever, um, you're going to find that you have to go in at a lower ticket price. But as you do more shows in the market, you gain more of a following, you slowly increase that ticket price with each play. Or say like out of somewhere, you get a crazy amount of plays on college radio. Um, then you go into the market, you increase by a significant bump, and then you come in, you keep going up and up and up. It's really tough to narrow this down to specific individual artists when you're talking broad spectrum. However, if you want to become worth more, if you want to start charging more at your different shows, you're going to have to consider different factors like location, popularity, and venue. All of these attribute to the mighty dollar. It is also going to take a lot longer than you anticipate. And maybe, maybe that one day just everything changes. That's not impossible. It's very likely to happen, but don't expect one song to be that make or break for you. You never can really, you, you never know when it's going to happen.
but you better be prepared for when it does. All right, go produce. That brings us to our three main takeaways for the episode today. The first takeaway is build your own momentum regardless of if you want to get signed or not. You need that leverage. Reason number two, if you want to get signed, make sure you have a reason why you want to choose the label that you are choosing. If you don't know why, then go ahead, shoot me a message and we can figure that out together. Takeaway number three, if you want to increase your rates, if you want to charge people more, make sure you dominate your city first. You've got to talk to the people around you, public relations company, DJs, radios, bloggers, all of the above. Build that momentum within your city and then spread it to surrounding areas and that's how you grow from the nucleus and outwards. Those are our three main takeaways. Next week, I'll be diving into reflecting on my conversations on producers and engineers from the first three seasons. In conclusion, go produce. I want to shout out all the parties involved. Thank you so much for everything that you've done for us. Prevail Media Group, our listeners, our viewers. Shout out to all of you for making it all the way through this video. If you learned anything at all today, please go ahead, hit that like button, hit subscribe, and go ahead, hit that little bell icon as well because you want notifications every single Wednesday when we release new episodes. Remember, we're turning your passion into to profit within the music industry. This is exactly what I'm doing. This is exactly what you're going to be doing with me. Let's do it together. Why not? I also want to know if you have any questions. If you do, go ahead, throw that in the comments. And if you have any main takeaways that you thought was most interesting, shoot that in the comments as well. I want to chat with you. We'll see you next week. That's it. That's everything. We out. Ooh.